I call Dr Megan Woods. Oh, sorry, I should have said, members, the question is that the motion be agreed to, and I call Dr Megan Woods. Thank you very, Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. Um, and, I, and I can see, Mr Speaker, that you're allowing a very broad-ranging debate on this second reading of what is a very narrow piece of legislation, a piece of legislation that is about validating rates in Christchurch, but I see that you, you, you are wanting us to, to, to traverse the, the terrain in all its many corners, and I will too, Mr Speaker. I will oblige, and I'm sure my colleagues and their contributions to this bill will feel free free to frolic around the, the plains of Canterbury in how they address this. Because as the, as the speaker before me, the sponsor of this bill, of this bill and I want to acknowledge the Honourable Nikki Wagner, said this is a very specific bill around a very specific task, that this is about rectifying a mistake that happened with the way in which rates were struck in Christchurch over a period of time. Um, the Minister did say that it was a mistake um, made with the best of intentions. Well, Mr Speaker, I'm not sure how mistakes can be made with the best of intentions. I, I do believe it was probably a mistake made without malevolence. I do believe that it was probably a mistake not made on purpose, but I don't really think we can make mistakes with the best of intentions. But nonetheless, Christchurch City has found itself in a situation situation of having had a period of time where rates were not struck um, in, the, in the way they should be. And the way in which the, the, they have asked for this to be rectified is through a validating piece of legislation. And that is what we are here at the second reading to debate, Mr Speaker, and to, to kick around in a very broad-ranging way. So, so what, what we have here, though, is something that this parliament shouldn't be making a habit of and that is fixing mistakes via legislation. That we on the Select Committee, when we considered this piece of legislation, were very much of the united mind, if I could put it that way, for our Select Committee, that actually, no, Peter Dunn was not on that committee and part of the united mind. What we had was a, a crossing of the ways and wanting to ensure that we, that we as a parliament are doing all that is in our power to ensure we don't land back here having to fix up mistakes that are made because we don't have adequate guidance or adequate oversight of how it is that rates are struck by local body authorities. And that is something that um, I know that, um, from my perspective on the committee, that I, I'm very keen for, to get on the record. In the first reading speeches on this bill, Mr Speaker, my colleague, um, Sua William Seal, um, said that it was a rock and a hard place around this legislation, that we know it has to be done, we need to fix this is genuine error, but it's never something that we like doing. And in that contribution he made on, this, on that bill, Mr Speaker, he said that he wanted to hear what it was that the people of Christchurch had to say on this matter. And the Select Committee, even before this Parliament reconvened, were, were busy at work, the hard-working committee that we on the Local Government and Environment Select Committee are, were, were, were in Christchurch hearing the submission, the one submission that we heard on this bill. We did other work in Christchurch. I wouldn't like to imply that we did not um, do, do, a, do a, um, a full day's work. We also had the, the question of the legislation that we debated in the debate prior to this, the Arts Centre Trust Bill, to deal with on that day. But we heard from Christchurch City Council and we heard how it was that they discovered this error, and the, and the speaker before me described this, that it really was from a thorough order of their, of their processes after um, that it was discovered that this transition to a simpler language had been found, that they discovered this. And I think it was very insightful and very, uh, it was actually a really good experience for the committee members to, to listen to that and then for the discussion that followed about what it is that this parliament, what the responsibilities of this house is, is in ensuring that we don't get into those situations again. Now, Mr Speaker, you'll notice I've been speaking um, very specifically on, a, on a, the very narrow piece of legislation. Good. But um, now, since we are in the broad-ranging part of the debate, I would, I would like to venture out a little further, as it were, because what we did hear from the Minister after she dealt with the substance of what it is we are here today is to put it in the context of our recovery. Now, personally, I don't think that this needs to be put in the context of our recovery. I think that we, um, that actually 
to, to put it so, can be somewhat patronising to the people of Christchurch. That what we have is a, something that other t um, local authorities have gone through. But to use this debate to talk about what a wonderful job and how great things are in Christchurch is actually something I would rather not have seen. That um, yes, there are contentions within how the recovery in Christchurch is going. I didn't want to have to use this debate to debate those issues because that is not what this legislation is about, Mr. Speaker. That this is legislation about how it is that Christchurch City um, is asking us to fix a genuine debate. But um, to talk about organic food and nutraceuticals in the context of this legislation, as we heard from the, the previous speaker, is somewhat of a stretch. Now, Mr. Speaker. I would like to talk about housing in the context of this and how it is that if we're going to talk about the recovery, I want to talk about the lack of housing that we have in Christchurch. I want to talk about the level of rates that people are paying in the city of Christchurch. Order. Because <coughs> Order. Thank you. Um, I wouldn't like the member to think that because the minister made some magnanimous, sorry, the member promoting the bill, uh, made some magnanimous and inclusive comments around Christchurch and its recovery, that she should stray from her first um, thoughts, which are that she should keep the debate relatively tight. And uh, she made the comment that she wouldn't like to think that she had to stray broader than the mandate of the bill, and I would remind her that she doesn't. In actual fact, um, the comments that were made by the member initiating the, this legislation were those that um, that were magnanimous in respect of Christchurch and obviously well-meaning. And I guess what I'm indicating to um, this speaker and other speakers who will take a call is that they should bear in mind um, the particular strain in which those comments were made and um, bear in mind the scope of this bill. And uh, if I was recalcitrant in some way by not paying as close attention as I should have, that doesn't necessarily give subsequent speakers licence to wander off around the paddock, cut their own track in respect of the scope of this bill, which, as the member has already conceded, is very narrow. Thank you, Mr Speaker, and I take your wise words on board. So we, we are here tonight debating a rating bill. Now, ratings are levelled on property, Mr Speaker, as we all know. That um, rates and, the, and what we're here validating is mistakes that were made and how it is that the, the rates were struck on Christchurch on individual properties. Many of those houses that actually now, now have um, gone, that some of the, the houses that were this affected were actually um, some that have been demolished as a consequence of the red zone. And I think we'd all acknowledge um, how sad that is and, and, and what Christchurch has been through in terms of that, Mr Speaker. But I'd also note that perhaps we haven't had the rebuilding of as many houses as we would have liked to have seen to replace those properties where rates could have been struck or otherwise been struck. And this is, the, this is what we have to think about if we're going to be thinking about this piece of legislation in the context of the rebuild and the recovery of Christchurch, of what it does mean for our city, what it does mean for what we could be. Because, Mr Speaker, this is about the rating base of Christchurch. This is about where people live and this is about the homes in which people enjoy their lives when we're talking about rates, because this is the way that, that it has been chosen to, to do. So I would like to raise that in the context of, the context of this legislation, Mr Speaker. I think one of the things that some of the speakers, when this bill was, was previously before this House, um, did, did raise the question I referred earlier to the contribution that my colleague, um, Sua William Seo, had made, was that he invited pe um, members in Christchurch, and I, and I quote from William Seo's speech, was, we support this bill through its first reading. I would invite all members and citizens of Christchurch to take the opportunity to submit on this bill and make their views known to the government about the lack of action that they are seeing in the rebuild there. Thank you. And that is from a first read, reading speech on, on this bill, Mr Speaker. Um, myself, I think that it is a shame that we didn't hear more people, that we only did have the one submission on this bill. It would have been interesting to get feedback from the people of Christchurch on this. But I guess one of the things, and, and I can reach across the House to my colleague who is the sponsor of this bill, that we know just how tired many of the people of Christchurch are and what they have been through, and that there is a bit of fatigue actually with many people in Christchurch in terms of um, input into consultative processes because there have been a number, Mr Speaker, that there have been 
many things for the people of Christchurch to have their say on and to, to input in. And I think that probably is one of the reasons why we didn't, um, we didn't have um, as many contributions as perhaps my colleague, um, Sir William Searle, was thinking when he was making that comment in his first reading speech. But I think that we do stand here with a very narrow piece of legislation, Mr Speaker, um, that does a very specific task that is about correcting a mistake that was made without malevolence. Um, and it is a mistake that does need to be corrected because we need our ratings to be struck in a legal way and in accordance with the Local Government Act. So, Mr Speaker, um, Labor supports this bill to the House um, and in no way any slur on the Government. We don't want to be here again supporting more validating legislation, as I'm sure my colleagues across the House would concur with. And I think that we as a House need to turn our mind to how it is that we can, we can avoid being in this place again, whether that be through the audit process, whether that be through um, issuing good guidance to councils as they strike their rates, and to ensure that resolutions um, which confer either the legality or illegality of rates and how they're levied are struck are something that we can have in place. So, Mr Speaker, Labor supports this legislation. Thank you. I call the Honourable